We here at the Gilbert and Tobin Centre of Public Law are so excited to be celebrating our 20th anniversary or birthday. The idea of supporting something as important as a centre for public law um, appealed to me immediately. It's been a fantastic thing to support and we've been supporting it ever since. And I'm pleased and proud that we continue to do so. I was employed as its first director uh, back in 2000 and it meant that as that director for the first eight years uh, I uh, constructed the team, I've been employing people whether it be leaders like Megan Davis through to Andrew Lynch and Sean Brennan through to others who were research assistants or students who came to work on the different projects. My job also was to make sure that we had a clear set of priorities, that we were involved in debates that would make a difference and we selected topics such as bills of rights through to terrorism, through to federalism or a range of other topics that are of great importance to Australia's future. During that time the centre went from just the name on a door to a big bustling centre that's had both a global and national impact and I'm really proud of the fact that it's helped create a lot of careers and a lot of people have gone from there to have an even bigger say in areas of academic scholarship. I started at the centre in 2005 and I was the deputy director and I headed up the centre's terrorism and law project. In 2009, I became the director, the second director of the centre, a role that I filled until 2013. During that time, I was working mainly on the federalism project. And then after 2013, I was co-directing the judiciary project with Gabrielle Appleby. Uh, and now I'm just an ordinary member of the centre, which is great. I started at the Gilbert and Tobin Centre a long time ago in 2002 in its early days I came on board to work on an ARC funded research project about a treaty or treaties between governments and First Nations peoples in Australia. This is a research centre that is focused in a really positive constructive way on impact that it cares deeply about producing research that can actually have a positive effect in the real world. And there are academics and practitioners who are part of the centre that are taking that principle really seriously and are making a really positive difference. Being one of the few, if only Aboriginal public lawyers working in um, the space of constitutional reform and, and other matters relating to Aboriginal uh, law and Aboriginal people. The Gilbert and Tobin Centre just taught me a lot of things about being a good academic, being a prepared academic, being thorough and measured and balanced and drawing upon all your networks of GT colleagues to, to test ideas. My time at the centre uh, taught me about excellent research about working across disciplines uh, with other colleagues and making sure that we put that research into practice and out into the public arena. I've always been really pleased about the work that's done in human rights and uh, when the centre was formed in 2000 there were no bills of rights, no Human Rights Act in Australia and uh, an early priority was to change that, to do the research, to come up with the ideas and uh, our first Bill of Rights director was Megan Davis who had that job of seeing if we could bring about change in this area and we succeeded. Uh, we had the ACT, Human Rights Act, that was followed by the Victorian Charter of Human Rights and Responsibilities and more recently the Queensland Human Rights Act and we've seen three major pieces of legislation that have turned around the fact we had none of these previously and has got Australia on a very different trajectory to making sure that basic rights about speech, uh, basic rights even in some cases about health and education are written into our law in a game-changing way to better serve the community. We advocated strongly based upon comparative research looking towards the situation in the United Kingdom for the creation of the office of what is now in Australia called the Independent National Security Legislation Monitor. We weren't the only group to uh, suggest that this is a role that would have an important impact in terms of uh, monitoring the effect of anti-terrorism laws upon the Australian polity. Uh, but I do think the consistency of those submissions and the fact that we drew heavily upon comparative research really led to uh, that office coming into being. So when I think of impact, I think of that as a really great example of what the centre can do. The most significant thing I had the opportunity to work on while I've been with the centre is unquestionably the support that a team of us from the centre were able to provide um, in a technical sense to the deliberative dialogues held regionally around Australia that culminated in the National Constitutional Convention at Uluru where uh, the people gathered there issued the Uluru Statement from the Heart. I'm delighted to be working with my colleagues Tienis Roo and Melissa Crouch 
and others in the centre on the Comparative Constitutional Law Project. This project is really dear to my heart given my comparative interests and it's done so much to bring in people from around the world to the Gilbert and Tobin Centre to enrich our research here but also to let people around the world know about the wonderful work we're doing here on the Australian Constitution but also about global constitutionalism. Being a member of the Gilbert and Tobin Centre has given me opportunities to do new, innovative, collaborative research on the way Australian public law can and should respond to issues uh, raised by the evolving nature and functions of government. Uh, so for example, I'm currently working on a project which looks at the public law implications of government automation. And another project I'm working on with Dr. Lisa Burton Crawford examines the way legislation is drafted, used and interpreted by modern government institutions. The most exciting part of the Judiciary Project has been the opportunity to work with Andrew Lynch, who was for many years the director of the Judiciary Project and the co-director with myself. Um, and we did a whole lot of projects together and we're still doing a whole lot of projects together. We have worked together to write a book on the Tim Carmody affair regarding the appointment of the Chief Justice of Queensland. We've also just finished working together in relation to a book that looks at the judge, the judiciary and the court, looking at individual, collective and institutional dynamics on the court. And we've also done some really exciting work with the judges through the uh, Judicial Conference of Australia, the JCA, and the Australian Institute of Judicial Administration, AIJA. Um, and we've worked with them to look at temporary judicial officers uh, as well as um, uh, judicial education. So I think really, I mean, picking up on that theme, the, the really critical purpose that we bring to our work in the Judiciary Project is engagement with the judiciary. We don't research them in isolation. We, we want to have a real dialogue with them wherever possible. We think that leads to far better and much more relevant research outcomes. But it's also then explaining the judiciary to the public, uh, the reference that Gabrielle made to the book that we wrote on judicial appointments in Queensland and the Tim Carmody affair was really about providing an accessible account of that story, which is a really fascinating one, uh, to the public that were reading about it in the media, but we felt lacked the kind of um, contextual information they might need to make sense of it. So it's really about bridging, I think, the more mysterious arm of government, which is the judicial arm, with a, a deep public understanding. And I think that reflects the kind of ideals of the Gilman Tobin Centre, which is about, um, you know, ensuring that the work that's done in universities has real relevance to the community. OzPub Law, which is the Australian public law blog, is a collaborative blogging project where academics, lawyers and students share expert commentary and analysis on public law issues. And the blog it's, is an initiative of the um, Gilbert and Tobin Centre of Public Law. It was established in 2015. Uh, since 2019, it's been co-facilitated with the Australian Association of Constitutional Law. And it's just another example of how the GNT Centre is um, networking with the wider community. The Hub and the Gilbert and Tobin Centre are collaborating on a stream of research which we've called Technologies and the Rule of Law. This is looking at the use of technology in government. So that can be um, automation of decision making, an example of which is RoboDebt. It can be more sophisticated AI data-driven techniques um, for the purposes of, for example, service delivery. Um, it can include um, a, um, technology in the context of um, elections, so election technologies. And what we're trying to understand is the extent to which the use in practice lines up with rule of law values, transparency and accountability, equality before the law and predictability and consistency. The collaboration between um, the Gilbert and Tobin Centre and the Allens Hub um, is really about bringing expertise together. So the Gilbert and Tobin Centre has a long history of expertise expertise in public law, whereas what the hub brings is an, is an expertise in some of the technologies themselves and also how to understand their application in a legal and government context. The Gilbert and Tobin Centre has really allowed me to pursue my research, particularly uh, in relation to the judiciary uh, and judicial regulation uh, through the Judiciary Project and my work with Andrew Lynch, um, but also to work with uh, many other colleagues, including uh, Ros Dixon, who's now the director of the centre. We've worked together on the Critical Judgments Project, which is a teaching-based resource around teaching critical thinking in federal constitutional law, um, and also to work with uh, Professor Megan Davis, Sean Brennan, um, uh, Gemma McKinnon, 
Kinnan and Sinnott in relation to the Uluru Statement from the Heart and constitutional recognition for Indigenous peoples. Now, each of those projects has this orientation towards an applied um, use of public law research. And that's where I've really felt a satisfaction of being a member of the Gilbert and Tobin Centre. I've had um, Ross Dixon, who's been an amazing mentor, who's really guided me both in my research, but also in terms of giving me access to opportunities and making me aware of opportunities, but also others such as Sangeetha Pillay, who's been a real kind of sounding board for me as I've worked through my research, but not just the research side of things, but also just kind of navigating the realities of being essentially an apprentice academic. And I don't think I could be doing what I'm doing right now without that support and that mentorship. We've got like amazing administrative lawyers and people that look at public law more broadly in the theoretical aspects. And so I think collectively, the centre is a bunch of incredibly collegiate and generous people that collectively provide a very broad spectrum of expertise that really enriches the perspective that I'm able to bring to any issue that I look at. Every day I try and think of some of those really valuable experiences that I had at the Gilbert and Tobin Centre and they include things like mentoring more junior colleagues, trying to make people feel that they're part of a collaborative enthusiastic research environment and also thinking about how our own research can be translated into policy outcomes. So how can we make our research intelligible to a, a non-scholarly audience? How can we try and bring um, the impacts of our research to bear in a policy setting? And in turn, how can we perhaps try and shape public opinion or inform public opinion so that the general public have a better understanding of the areas that we research? I always am drawing on the lessons that I learned at the Centre of Public Law, in particular um, about the value of the public institution of the university as a credible, powerful voice in the Australian society. Uh, we have a strong collaboration right now with the um, University of New South Wales where we do shared research on poverty and inequality and we make sure that every day that we're thinking about the research, we're thinking about how do we make sure it has an impact in society and that's what I learned at the Centre. In years I really don't know what I'll be working on. One of the things I love about being part of the Gilbert and Tobin Centre, it's a community of researchers as well as people committed to change and public law engagement and part of research is every time a new issue comes to the fore we respond as scholars and researchers with analysis, proposals for reform, critique uh, and refinements. The centre um, is more important than ever. I think it will continue to do the great work it has done in many of the critical issues facing the country. And I think one of those is our relationship with our Indigenous people, uh, the issue about constitutional recognition. Uh, the Centre has been a key player in that debate and done a lot of work in it for a good period of time and continues to do so. That is one area that's certainly important to me and I know important to the Centre. The 20th anniversary of the Gilbert and Tobin Centre um, in this country is is really important and I think that's never more evident than in the area of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples in this country which I believe is one of the most important if not the most important public law issue in Australia. The priority for me is to continue um, work in support of the implementation of the reforms that were called for in the Uluru Statement from the Heart. I think the issuing of that statement in May 2017 was a real turning point in a debate in Australia that is fundamentally important, not just in public law, but to Australian society. It's very important for public lawyers um, and the centre, as it has done, um, to listen to the voices of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and to ensure that we do no harm in that area, because sometimes the impact of our work can have a detrimental effect on communities. Um, and I think Gilbert and Tobin uh, the centre over the years has learned a, a convention that um, other law centres probably don't uh, understand so well and that is um, you must ensure that your work um, is informed by the community uh, who it affects. That work is continuing providing that advice to the Aboriginal community and to the nation and, and the processes that are set up on what form of constitutional amendment should be involved as we move towards a referendum but also more broader advice on the design of a voice to parliament.
We want to say thank you to Gilbert and Tobin for the enormous generosity they have shown uh, us at UNSW, Faculty of Law, for the last 20 years. The centre has given us as scholars so much, so much to our students and the broader faculty. We thank them and our broader community of supporters for everything they've done to make the centre what it is today. We look forward to continuing to work with you for the years to come and to regrouping for another celebration in 20 years.